Hi there! In today's video, we'll be comparing Melee DPS playstyles and job abilities so you can choose your next Melee DPS job. Post editing Stefan here, you don't see me too often, but I got my very first survey sponsorship. Now, before you get all, I can't believe you accepted a sponsorship in order to support your dreams as a content creator and propel yourself into full-time content creation. Don't worry, I'm not selling anything. It's just a survey about Final Fantasy XIV and your experience within the game. You can find the sponsorship survey right in the description box or in the pinned comments down below. By taking about 45 seconds to fill out the survey, you're helping support me and my dreams. Okay, cool. Now, back to the video. First up, we have Monk. Unlocked at level 1 in Ulda, Fury Fist of Destructions. Monk's main attraction is super speedy gameplay while being able to switch tactics mid-fight depending on the number of enemies. Monk utilizes forms which are main GCD combos of the Monk, Coral, Raptor, and Opa Opo. You have three different form rotations and you can mix and match depending on what you need. This is a great image on the Final Fantasy Guide website to reference when trying to learn Monk. In my opinion, the best thing to do to learn these forms is hopping into low level synced dungeons so you can practice the rotations and locking in the positionals. Now the rotation used to be far more strict but has become a little bit more intuitive with Endwalker so understanding the buffs in the rotations is fairly important. Icy Vein's website has one of the best flowcharts for understanding when you transition through your forms as follows. When in Opa Opo form, do you have Leaden Fist active? If yes, use Boot Shine. If no, use Dragon Kick. When in Raptor form, does your Disciplined Fist buff have more than 6 seconds remaining? If yes, use True Strike. If no, refresh with Twin Snakes. When in Coral form, do your Demolish have more than 6 seconds remaining? If yes, use Snap Punch. If no, refresh Demolish. Now, this may seem like a lot when you are first starting off, but if you level it from level 1, you will easily be able to pick up these key markers and understanding when you need to use different abilities. Using this flowchart will start being able to craft a natural rotation when flowing through your form. And as you practice more and more, you'll tend to understand it a lot easier and you won't have to keep looking at your buff hotbar. I'd say Monk is the only melee DPS job that has this approach to it, and I'd say it's fairly advanced for newer players to start off on. I think ultimately it's up to you and what you're comfortable with and how quickly you pick up the job. For some people it makes sense and for others they need a lot more practice. Monk has a fair amount of support abilities for itself and the party, including your Riddle of Fire, Riddle of Wind, and Riddle of Earth that gives you a damage buff increase, increase to auto attack speed, and damage mitigation of 20% for yourself. Brotherhood increases the party's damage as well as helps you output more with opening more chakras which are your job gauge and give you a slew of abilities to use while Mantra increases party-wide HP recovery via healing actions by 10%. Very useful for supporting your healers and their HP recovery from those room-wide attacks. I personally put Monk up there on the intermediate to advanced scale for rotation difficulty, lots of utility, and overall quick gameplay speed. So if you're a player who really enjoys a challenge, Monk might be your next job. Dragoon unlocks at level 1 in Gridania and probably the most forgiving melee DPS on this list, as it shares armor with tanks, so you're starting off with a big boost in stats for defense and HP compared to other jobs. Dragoon focuses on a very solid and predictable GCD rotation that is not all that difficult to execute with a fair amount of weaving from your jump abilities. Now be careful when using these jump abilities as you can just jump right off a platform if you're not paying attention which is pretty notorious for Dragoon jobs. Dragoon is a slower GCD job but still outputs a great amount of damage and DPS as well as some very useful survivability self buffs and one party wide ability. Life Surge not only lets you get one critical hit off, but also absorbs HP for the damage you deal for 5 seconds. This can be critical for getting HP back up on some weird trash pulls or if the tank dies and you need to keep aggro until he's revived. Lance Charge increases your damage and Battle Litany increases critical hit rate by 10% for your entire party. Dragoon Sight also gives a range buff where you and another party member get a damage buff for duration. At later tiers of Dragoon is where you start to shine on this job not only in DPS but the visual abilities as well. Your job gauge dragon which when filled allows you to enter into an enrage mode allowing for Nistron and Stardiver, which Stardiver being arguably the coolest looking ability in the game. 
Early leveling Dragoon feels very safe and a really great job for beginners who want to get into melee DPS as when you're up close in personal mode fighting things can feel a little stressful. I'd say this is a beginner class to play and very straightforward so if you want an easy entry to melee DPS then Dragoon is probably for you. Ninja unlocks at level 10 in Limza Lominza. This job is the best, most associated feeling with the job. There is something about when playing ninja that makes you feel like you are living your Hokage dreams as well as easily the most versatile melee DPS on this list. Ninja operates more off a burst window than high to medium damage output. Your burst window is when you apply trick attack. Even though it seems ninja doesn't have any party wide ability, trick attack is just that. 5% damage taken when applied to an enemy for your entire party. Aligning this with your party members opening rotations can really increase the overall damage of the entire party. Ninja's job based GCD rotation is pretty simple comparatively to Monk or Dragoon with just about 3 to 4 GCDs to use. Where Ninja's versatility comes in is often described as a melee range job is in its job abilities which are mudras. Combining these mudras in different ways allow you access to different abilities like Hutan which is your self buff of attack speed by 15% which really needs to be up at all times. You also have Kutan, range fire damage AoE. Dothan, ground damage over time ability, which also applies heavy, and Rhython, 650 potency range lightning single target damage ability that is going to be a huge damage dealer until later levels. Most of your mudra abilities are range, so this allows you to keep melee DPS uptime and even the most casual of content. Unfortunately, if you mess up your mudra signs, you'll get the ominous bunny lord summon, which tells the entire party that you messed up. At later levels, you get your huge mudra upgrade to Kutan, which is Goka Meyaku, which is 600 potency to all enemies. Three enemies, that's 1800 damage potency in one ability. Think of when you have a big pool of six to nine enemies, just very big AoE damage. You also get single target Hiyosho Ranryu, which is a 1300 damage potency ice damage single target. Also, just really cool looking. These are just a few of the awesome abilities you get as ninja, not including the new gap closers that they added in Endwalker after the use of Right Thon, which make this job even more desirable. Ninja also gets a huge shout out for the running and jumping animation that really emphasize that you are a super cool looking job. It's a big highlight for me personally how aesthetically pleasing it is to play. If you want a sleek, versatile melee range job, then Ninja is the job for you. Next up, Samurai unlocks at level 50 in Ulda. Samurai is what we call a selfish job. You may hear this term being thrown around quite a lot with Black Mage as well. This means that Samurai has no party utility at all and only focuses on being a powerhouse DPS all on its own. Samurai job gauge are called Sen which you obtain by completing the regular GCD combos. Depending on how many Sen you have unlock specific abilities, one Sen being Higanbana, two Sen being Tenkan Goken, and 3 Sen being Midari Setsugeka. These are perfectly laid out if you're battling a boss or you're in trash pools. For boss battles, you want to make sure your Hingenbana is always up as it's a huge damage over time ability. 2 Sen we're going to be using for trash pools as it's a cone AoE ability. And 3 Sen Midari Setsugeka is your for when there's one or two enemies. Now you never really want to override a Sen which makes this an easy rotation to follow. If you're on a trash pool in dungeon, you're just spamming AoE. Boss battles have a very specific and straightforward opener as well, so I put Samurai on the intermediate level of these jobs. Reason being is that even though the beginning rotation is straightforward, at later levels you have quite a few other abilities to add in, as well as just optimizing your Sen and your Kenki gauge. Samurai's powerhouse DPS comes from a few mentionable abilities like Tsubami Gaishi which repeats your previous IE Jutsu or your Sen abilities with high potency. So Midari Setsugeka it repeats again but at a 300 potency increase from the original. Every 120 seconds we also get our level 90 abilities Ogi Namakiri and Kayeshi Namakiri which are 900 and 1350 potency respectively not for just a single target but it also is an AoE damage ability. If you want to focus just on your own TPS and powerhouse through battles and boss fights then Samurai is definitely the job for you. Lastly Reaper unlocks at level 70 in Ulda. I guess most of the melee are just in Ulda. 
You may have heard that Reaper is so broken and OP and the strongest DPS out there. You would have heard correctly. The job gauge is the soul gauge to which you gain by using your regular GCD combo. The job abilities is a pretty extensive list I think compared to other melee jobs. But the great thing about Reaper that since it's a new job, they replace higher tier abilities and they're not separate buttons. So it really helps with the button bloat for this job specifically. Our main few abilities that we use our soul gauge on are Bloodstock, which is your single target ability, Grim Swath, which is your AoE ability, and Gluttony, which is another stronger AoE ability. When you use these, you will get stacks of Soul Weaver, which gives you access to even more abilities. Gibbet, Gallows, and Guillotine. These six are the main abilities that will change later on when you unlock your Enshroud job gauge, which unlocks some of these previously mentioned abilities into Void Reaping, Cross Reaping, and Grim Reaping. So you can see why it's really good that they're replacing the abilities because these would be too many abilities to have separate on your hotbars. I put Reaper in the intermediate level for players as the initial rotation is very simple yet very effective and you can be put in the high tier of DPS just by executing the simple GCD combo. The difficulty in my personal opinion comes in late game Reaper when trying to juggle your hotbars and cross hotbars for the very quick button pressing and rotation controller players might seem to have a harder time with this later down the line. The job also has another interesting ability that makes it feel a little broken, which is the application of death's design, which increases the damage you deal by 10%. And if the target is KO'd before the effect expires, you'll get 10 soul gauge. Now think about big trash pulls, you're going to be filled up to your ears with soul gauge, which allows you to use your very strong abilities often at later levels. It does have some support utility with Arcane Crest to nullify damage up to 10% of your maximum HP and Arcane Circle increases damage by 3% for you and your party. Now with the other jobs, the few support abilities would usually stop right there, but because Reaper's so brand new, you can tell how ironed out the job feels and nothing feels wasted or not important. These two support abilities work into the late game rotation that ultimately affect your DPS so you won't forget about using these. I like this approach because the job feels complete in that sense where I'm using everything given to me. If you're just starting in the melee DPS role, I might choose Reaper as it's a very simple job comparatively with the most payout. Now, I hope this has given you some information in order for you to be able to pick your next job for the melee DPS role. Comment down below which you're going to choose or what you want to play next. If you got any value out of this video, then don't forget to like this video as it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to get notified of all of my Endwalker videos. You can find my social media links in the description box. And if you want to watch more Endwalker comparisons and guides, then you can click here.